acrylic nail artist, if you're a body painting artist, if you paint people with a fake tan, if you're a custom painter, if you're an illustration artist, if you're a makeup airbrush artist, for any type of airbrush artist out there, these simple exercises are going to make you stand out that little bit more. The air is always on. We've already spoken about that. To be honest, I haven't done any airbrushing in about six weeks. Why is that? Because I've moved house. Because I've moved house up in this room. And I'm sure it happens to a lot of you. You take a bit of time out, life gets in the way, you have more kids, your wife gets pregnant, you have another kid. You gotta make breakfast for everyone, the in-laws come over. Life gets in the way, doesn't it? And we find that we just don't have time to do the things that we want to do. So when it comes time that you actually can do something you wanna do, you sit there and you think, oh no. I've forgotten everything. We've got a bit of paper on the board, nothing special. I'm just going to go through a simple few exercises. It's nothing, it's nothing mind blowing, you know, it's nothing new, but it's very helpful stuff. And it's definitely what I'd recommend you do before jumping into something bigger, like a prized artwork or something like that. You know what I mean? The first thing we're going to do is test that our airbrush works by doing a couple of small dots. Looks like the airbrush is working now. Well, it appears that your airbrush is working fine, but the paint is a little bit coarse. So what are you going to do about that? So we'll grab some paint retarder or reducer as I commonly call it, more politically correct. Beautiful. It may seem extremely boring, but the interesting part is that you're actually reteaching yourself how to double action correctly. Just remember, Keep the air on at all times and just paint as you will. But make sure that you're always keeping the air on. Air on, pull back the paint, push forward. The air's still on, you see what I mean? Excellent warm up exercises. And advancing from there, we're going to go on, we're going to get a little more technical and, and, and add a little bit of movement to these effects, okay? So remember that whenever we do a line, we're going to be moving before we pull back for paint. The air is always on. We've already spoken about that. And three, two, one, go. Double actioning correctly. You're moving before you pull back for the paint and you're not getting blobs at either end of your line. If this is you, then move on. You're doing really well. Good on you. Back and forward. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. Now you'll notice with the lines that we've also done the upwards and downwards lines. Some might refer to this direction as vertical, not me. After airbrushing these vertical lines, you just start and stop between two of the lines. Sometimes, you know, I'll just, I'll just change things up. I'll make it a little bit random, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'll do a line between the first two thirds and then on the way back, the last two thirds. If you're comfortable with your lines at this stage, move on to the next bit, create a couple of effects. But what I'm talking about is in fact, dagger strokes, blends, and reverse dagger strokes. Called different things throughout the industry, but at the end of the day, it's all the same shiznit. Hey Snoop. So let's get right into it. Over this side. It's blending off in one direction. Just remember, the lighter that you can pull off your effects, the more control it shows you have. Again, just double actioning, get your movement down pat, and we're just going to begin with the air on, and just doing a simple blend. Light as we can. And perhaps make it a little darker if you wanna go over it. Excellent. So you're happy with your blends, you've made a hamburger, now it's time for us just to have a quick little go at the dagger strokes and reverse dagger strokes. If you've pulled off these blends well, these should be a piece of hamburger. Beautiful! So you're happy with the control that you've got of each of your effects? I think the, it's time that you moved on to the hardest of all the little control exercises. And that's these little script loops or hooks. They're little loops. 
So we're just gonna airbrush some loops. We'll go with script loops. Now these require you to maintain exactly the same consistency throughout the line. However, you need to change your distance, which means that you're also going to need to change the amount of paint that you're applying to the paper, which is what makes this such a difficult yet effective control exercise. I'm just going to move straight into it and see if you get what the hell I'm saying. That is how you can tell it's been six weeks since I've done anything because this is a horrible result and I won't stop until I've got it perfect and I'm not going to move on until it's perfect. None of this comes down to natural ability. It's my firm belief that it just comes down to practice and anyone can do this, honestly. That's my best hamburger. I can't draw, yet I can airbrush. And the difference is because I like to practice. Like any football player kicks the ball between witches hats. As boring as it is for them, it's the simple things which are going to make you improve and make you the artist that you want to be. It's not constantly doing pictures, it's pushing yourself with the basics. I'm going to keep practicing until I get these right. What's the point of all of this? Whether you airbrush acrylic nails for a living, if you're an airbrush makeup professional, if you spray tan people using one of these little gadgets, if you're a professional custom painter, if you want to do pictures that people don't believe have been painted, the difference between you and them is not a natural ability. It's their dedication to practice the basics. It's up to you how badly you want it. All I'm showing you is the most important techniques to practice in order for you to reach your goal sooner. Let's do a couple more. The smaller that your loops get, the faster that you have to move. Well, that's just great, mate. I've done a full page of these bloody loops and I've got nothing to show for it. It's the old Miyagi factor, once again, the old wax on, wax off. After you've done a full page of these loops, have a go at doing a blend again. You can go three times as fast because you've done something that's three times as hard for the past half an hour. Everything else has just become that much more simple because in the past half hour, you've just improved at airbrushing. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Anyway, if it's been a little while since you've actually done any airbrushing, House burnt down. To refresh yourself, go through with these exercises in the same order as what I've just done. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, if you got something out of the video, be sure to share it and to uh, spread the love around a little bit. It's been great having you.